Okay, so we fucked up the Denise into the flicker fix. The, the Indivision. The Indivision, yeah. ECS. And then we've connected that to the VGA. And now we're going to Oops. give it a shot and see what happens. See if we get a picture. Main screen turn on. <laughs> we get signal. There it goes. Lights on. The vampire. Well, yep. Indivision bit screen. Cool. And we should get vampire boot screen. Betty, what are you doing out here? Cats aren't allowed in the garage. Yep, there we go. Where's the cat? Where, where did Betty go? She's around here somewhere. <laughs> So we're doing the keyboard now. Yeah. Uh, uh. I think this was the parts bag for the keyboard. And we got the keyboard assembled. About to put the case together. Uh, LEDs are lined up. Yes, everything's lined up. So yeah, one thing, you know, and Steven did a great job with the checkmate and all, but one thing that I really kind of wish was that maybe there was a little more um, uh, instruction and a little less information in a couple places in the manual. For instance, around um, configuring the LED headers, it would have been really nice had there have been something like, you know, hey, if you're using the keyboard case, you know, use this and this header, you know, versus if you're not using the keyboard case, uh, there's just, there's a lot of dense information here to figure out, and a little bit of clear-cut instruction would have been, would have been nice. Yeah, I agree. And it looks like we've got two headers on here for the Amiga. One is for the power, and one is for the hard drive activity. And so we've got... A green and blue wire coming off the cable here and it looks like it's attached to the keyboard header coming out so I think this is going to be the power header for the LED all this green and blue wire here coming off the keyboard header yeah well I, yeah I think that's gonna go um, over here to the power LED for the the Amiga yeah all right well let's give it a try and see what happens Nothing on there. We must need to reverse the wire. Ah, there it goes. The configuration is green to the edge of the case and blue to the inside of the case on the power LED header. So now we've printed off a 3D bracket for the GoTech drive installation. You voided the warranty. Yeah. Man, that thing is kind of tiny in there. Isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, it looks like these three holes line up pretty good with these three mounting brackets holes. We've got the GoTech mount installed and the CD mount installed now we just need to mount them down okay there's the GoTech drive installed and it looks like it's a pretty good fit with just the regular floppy front case yeah we're gonna fix that though yeah we're gonna print a new front for that What is this going to be you're printing? That's the bracket for the vampire stuff. Alright, so we're going to try the keyboard now. Both ends the same. They should be. Yeah, both ends are the same. Alright, 
this will do. Back to here. Do you want to see it? All right, keyboard installed. Let's check the keyboard and see if it works. Yeah, man. Boom. Unknown command. Is it done? No, it's not done yet. 97% it says. It looks like it's turning out pretty good, though. Yeah. That's right, we got a Buddha card. We're going to place it in the Zaro slot. Zaro 2. Alright, so there's the Buddha flash card installed. We got the GoTek floppy wired up with longer cables. The CD ROM or the DVD ROM drive is hooked up. And we got an SD. Let's see if we can get a better picture of it here. An SD to IDE. And we're going to write um, Coffin OS to it and put it on here. It's done. Is it? Yeah. We've got this bracket here that we're going to hook up into the back. This little black slot, a uh, blank slot right here. <clears throat> and it's got the network card, little network module. DVD or HDMI, I should say. That goes in there. We're gonna, we're gonna screw that down. And then over here is an extension for the SD card that goes to the Vampire. All right, so we got it mostly put together now. We got the HDMI screen going. Next step will be putting in power supply. The SF450. Looks like we got it upgraded, huh? Yeah. A mega chip and 132 megs of fast RAM. Okay, so we've got the power supply in. An SF450 by Corsair. I hooked up the networking module. To the vampire board and uh-oh got a little problem with the length of the power cable it's not reaching okay so we've got mostly everything set up the power supply we can't use it yet because this cable is about three or four inches short so we had to order an extension and now we're powering it up and seeing what we got. It seems your network is not yet configured. Mm -hmm. Would you like to run a network wizard now? Well, here we should probably go ahead and get it in the hub. Okay, well, let's hook it up to the network. Got a hub going, got the cable. Gonna hook it in to the network. Okay. Oh, it automatically recognized it. Look at that. DHCP. Select a what? I can't read it. Select a net interface. Boom. Okay, and we got Vampire running. Man, that looks sweet. Well, there it is. We're online. It feels like 1993, though. We're going to try Heretic. Running on the Amiga 500 with a Vampire 2. Whoa. 
No sound though. That's pretty cool though. You want to give it a shot? We don't have speakers hooked up right now, so. Still pretty cool though, that it's able to handle that pretty good. Cool. All right, so we got the sound working now. We're gonna try Doom. All right, let's try 640 BGRA and see what happens. Oh, that's too small. <laughs> Sound works there. All right, let's get back out of here. And that is going to wrap things up for the Amiga 500 Vampire 2 Plus in the Checkmate 1500 Plus case episode. We do have a couple of small minor things to do to the project, such as putting in extension cables, but we're fairly confident that it's going to work and then we're going to pop the case back on the top. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you again next time and in our future videos where we are probably going to feature this system. Until next time, this is Deadline for Cities In.